What is percent and how does this relate to chemistry? Using mass and volume percents as illustrative examples. In this video, we're going to discuss how the concept of percentages that you know and love from daily life translate into chemistry concepts. So often in chemistry, students have a block between the mathematical concept that they've learned in early math classes and the chemistry concepts which are directly um, related to these math concepts. This video is an attempt to bridge that gap before we've even really discussed the chemical concepts. I'm going to approach some chemistry examples from a very mathematical, non-conceptual way to illustrate these connections between math concepts and chemistry concepts. You'll learn more about the chemical concepts discussed here in the classes and videos directly addressing those. So what is the point of this video? Well, we're going to relate what we already know about percent back to the definition. Then we're going to point out this connection to how it will be used in chemistry to help scaffold that knowledge. So this is a video all about what we call scaffolding, building on what you already know to connect into something new. Let's start with what we already know. Where do you really commonly use percents? We want to connect to the chemistry topics that you'll cover with how you already use these percentages. So the trick here is not to see these new chemistry topics as something completely new, but as an extension of things we already know. So let's start with grades. Solve this for the answer, but also think about how you got this answer and see if you can put that into an equation. You may want to pause the video here, complete it. N again, not just the answer, but also how you got the answer, and then come back. So we know that to do this, we're going to take 85 over 95 times 100% to get the student grade. Let's break this apart into what we actually did. The oft-used phrase here is part over whole, which is great. But I'd even go a little bit further when we're discussing this in science to say that it's the part of interest. This isn't a particularly meaningful change, but it helps to focus our attention that we are solving for the percent of something. In this case, it is the percent that we got correct on the exam. Of course, we could also solve for the percent that we got wrong if that was of interest. It just generally isn't the case. Let's do another example using percent of exam scores. Here, we're going to use the same concept, but we're going to solve in reverse. We already know the percent, and we know the total points. So, we can fill those into our equation. We have our parts of interest over our 40-point exam. We can then multiply our 40 points on both sides, divide by 100% on both sides, and get our part of interest being eight points. So we divided our 100%, we multiplied our 40 points, and that gives us our part of interest equals eight points. Now, let's extend this into chemistry. When we extend the percents into chemistry, we are often talking about things like mass percents and volume percents. But the concept is exactly the same. It's the mass of the thing that we care about over the total mass times 100%. Or perhaps it's the volume that we care about. And so we can talk about the volume of the thing we care about over the volume total times 100%. Theoretically, we can do this with moles as well. Um, though generally, we do tend to keep moles in fractions. But it's the same idea. Now I'm going to do these problems side by side with the exam questions that we started the video with in order to draw attention to that connection, to draw attention to how they're the same problem. Keeping in mind that we are connecting our chemistry topics to our math concepts, we are going to solve what is almost the identical problem. So when we solved this for gra exam grades, we said we had 85 points out of a 95 point exam and we asked what percentage did they get. In the mass percent question, I'm going to ask if 85 grams of a compound is carbon and the total molar mass of the compound is 95 grams, what is the mass percent of carbon? And you will do this in an identical way. You will take 85 divided by 95 times by 100 percent. 
and we get that same 89.5%. So we took the mass of interest over the total mass times 100% to get our percent of carbon, just like we did with our exam grades. Let's do the same thing for a volume percent example now. In this case, we have 85 milliliters of ethanol, which is the sort of alcohol that people drink. And that's added to a solution to get a total volume of 95 milliliters. What is the percent by volume of the solution? Just like in our exam grade question, we're gonna put the part of interest, the 85 milliliters, over the total volume, which is 95 milliliters to get our total percent, or to get our percent of ethanol in the solution. Now let's move on to example problems like the second exam question we did. So this was when we started with 20%. We knew the student's score was a 20% and we knew how many points was on the exam. We said that there was 40 total points on the exam. And we used algebra to then solve for what percent the student got. So effectively, we took 20% of 40, or 0.2 times 40, to get 8 points. We can do the same thing with mass percent. So in order to really draw attention to that similarity, I'm going to go ahead and keep um, the 20% and the 40 grams. So here I said that we have a compound that's 20% by mass of carbon, and that the total mass is 40 grams. How much is the carbon? So we're gonna work through this the same way. We have our part of interest, which we don't know. But that's what we're trying to figure out, over our total of 40 grams times 100%. So if we wanna know 20% of 40, we take 0.2, or 20% divided by 100% times by 40. 0.2 times 40 is eight. And so we would have eight grams of carbon. We can do the same thing for volume percent. Now might be a good time to pause the video and work on this on your own based on what we've done in the video so far, and then come back when you're either stuck or ready, um, depending on where your situation is. All right, so this is gonna work through the same way as our mass percent and the same way as our exam grade problem. We have a 20% by volume ethanol, we have a total volume of 40 milliliters. And so we're going to take our 20%, our 0.2, once you divide it by 100%, our 0.2, multiply it by our 40 milliliters to solve for our eight milliliters. Now let's do one more example. We're gonna relate this to the concept of percent ionization. You may not even know what percent ionization is right now, and that's okay. But with the definition of percents, we can actually talk about it regardless. You'll learn more about the chemical concept of percent ionization um, generally when you get to the last general chem class. That's usually where it's covered. Right now, we're going to keep focused on how this relates to the mathematical concept of percents. So we have 0.85 molar of a 0.95 molar solution is ionized. What percent of the solution is ionized? Just like our exam grade process, we're going to put the part that we're interested in, in this case the 0.85 that we were told ionizes, over the total molarity of the solution, or the 0.95 that we were told about. We can then multiply by 100% to get our total percent. And you can see how this directly relates to that first exam problem that we did as well. And this would give us an 89.5% ionization energy. This is gonna be one very important, very small step in many, many, many much bigger problems in Chem 1C. So we just wanna talk about this here so you see that connection when you get to Chem 1C. It's just like how you calculate any other percent, even just like an exam grade percent. In summary, in this video, we connected what we know about calculating percentages in situations like grades to chemical topics, some which you may have seen, many, even all maybe, which you haven't. 
This will form an entry point into more complex problems using mass percent, percent ionization energy, and so on and so forth. But you need to know this very first step in order to get that entry point and so that the whole problem doesn't feel like something new. The harder parts of these concepts when we get there is going to be kind of finding that part you care about or finding that total. Um, and that's where we'll build on when you get to this in chemistry classes.